Hi everyone, welcome to a comics loving edition of Words, Images, and Worlds. Delighted on this episode to be talking with comics creator, author Mark Bertolini. Mark, welcome to the podcast. Thank you for joining. Thank you very much for having me, Jason. I appreciate it. Yeah, I, I believe you and I did a written interview a few years ago when I was working on a blog and still working on the blog every now and then, but um, the podcast seems to be sort of the additional step from that. So thanks for connecting there as well as here. No and problem. yeah, yeah. I, I will mention a couple of your works at the beginning and then we can sort of circle back around to anything that you'd like to mention as well. Um, probably the most interesting title and the one that I love the most is Bigfoot Frankenstein. Bigfoot Frankenstein. Love that combination of ideas. Love the creativity, the the style of it. Um, and then you have some lighthearted fare, like um, Scum of the Earth and uh, <laughs> Knowledge yeah. and uh, Feeder, um, you know, strictly bedtime story stuff. Um, and Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and I'll also mention that you've worked in the world of Grimm. So uh, those are a couple that bubble to the surface for me, but um, we'll also talk about some of your favorites as well and see if we have some alignment there. Uh, curious by means of an origins question, what has connected you to the world of comics? What made you kind of go comics? This, this is the space for me. You know, I mean, I, I, I've been reading comics for as long as I can remember. I mean, I, I always say I basically, I think, I think I learned how to read from reading comic books. My parents just used to have random comics around the house, like old, like Marvel two in one. You know what I mean? I don't, I have no idea where they came from. I don't think they know where they came from. They were just there, yeah. and you know, I always loved the, the the combination of words and pictures. I was, a, you know, I was a big reader when I was a kid, so um, yeah, comics were kind of like perfect for me. Um, mm -hmm. And it wasn't until I was, I don't know, twelve or thirteen, I think, it was when that first, the very first wave of uh, image comics came out, right, with like. Yeah. Young Blood and Wildcats and all those things, and I was like, "Oh, people make up their own comics." Like I, I had, you know, it hadn't occurred to me before that that that's how it was done. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I was like, "Well, these guys are making up their own comic books. Like they're making up their own characters." And I was like, "I, that sounds fun. I'd like to do that." Mm -hmm. And you know, it was kind of off to the races ever since. Yeah, cool, cool. I I also uh, got introduced to comics just a few years before the image boom and. Uh, then the comics bust, of course, but um, then, you know, of course, Image has survived and the the kinds of stories there, they, they were just revolutionary and continue to be really interesting. Oh, yeah. I mean, the majority of stuff I read these days, I find is, is from Image. So, you know, whatever, 30 years later, I think it is now, like, mm -hmm. you know, it's it's kind of crazy. And I mean, coupling that with I, I, I found that there was a comic book store, like a 10 minute walk from my house. Oh, nice. Oh, nice. so that was, you know, I ended up spending all of my time and money there for the next yeah. <laughs> 10 years plus. So. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, curious about the kinds of stories that draw you in, um, the, the kinds of worlds that you like to create, because as I mentioned, um, and, and somewhat tongue in cheek there, there's some darkness that sort of weaves in there, um, w which makes sense given your reading history too. I think so. Yeah. I mean, the first comic that I ever read where I was really like, you know what, like this is not the kind of thing I'd like to make was Preacher. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. Prior to that, I was like, you know, like I, you know, I would make up superheroes and I would, you know, my own, my own superhero characters and things like that. But when I read Preacher, I was like, wow, this is actually like a really smart comic book. Like, you know, it's, mm -hmm. it's, it's meant for, for, you know, for grownups, you know, it's smart and it's funny and it's, it's scary and that was really kind of the catalyst i think for me to be like you know to start to develop like a, maybe real stories as opposed to just here's a team of superheroes and they're fighting a team of bad guys and there's no real reason for it you know that was very uh very much those image early days where there wasn't a whole lot of story it was just a lot of flashy art oh yeah yeah absolutely yeah um now I mentioned several titles of yours, yes. but uh, any particular favorite experiences so far for you that you'd like to mention? 
Well, you, I mean, you mentioned Bigfoot Frankenstein, which, which is one of my favorites. Um, it, it was such a pure collaboration between me and Vernon Smith, uh, the artist. Um, just because of like the kind of tongue in cheek sort of, um, you know, it, it was a more lighthearted story and it, it was designed that way. It was meant to be, you know, it was something that I hadn't really done before doing something that had a little, you know, where the stakes weren't so high all the time. Um, and just working with Vernon in that, you know, I would give him some the ideas and, you know, and he would, he would illustrate it. And he also, he also lettered it, but I was going back in and, and adding all of this fourth, you know, fourth wall breaking stuff that happens throughout the whole, the whole book mm -hmm. to the point where, you know, as I'm writing it now, I'm, I'm laughing. Like, you know, I, I, I think this, this, this stuff is, is funny. And I really hope, uh, you know, it connected that way with readers as well. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But yeah, Bigfoot Frankenstein is definitely one of my favorite books of my own. Um, and the other one uh, is the Argus. Oh yes. Yes. Uh -huh. So the Argus was, a, was, was a, an idea that I had had, Oh God, probably 20 years ago. Uh, and it, you know, it went through a lot of different uh, permutations before it finally, you know, I was finally able to get it out into the world, but uh, it, it's, it's another one that's, that's right up there for me in terms of, you know, I hate to say like my high watermark because I, I would hate to think that that's, that's, that's my peak, but as it stands right now, it's, it, it's, it's, you know, it's one of my favorite things I ever wrote. Yeah. And it, it felt, you know, it felt smart to me and I, and I, <laughs> I don't always feel that my own work is that smart sometimes. So, <laughs> um, you know, there, there's, there's a lot of guys getting punched in the face in my comics. So, um, yeah, the, the Argus really felt like a, like a bit of a different take on, you know, my normal, my normal work. So. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and for what it's worth, I know, um, people are sometimes their own worst critics. I just read yesterday that Gary Oldman said his performance as Sirius Black was like mediocre. And I'm going, what? Wow. <laughs> so um, as the artist, uh, yeah, I appreciate your work. So um, yeah. And, and sometimes we're our own worst critics in that way, but the Argus definitely uh, stands up for sure. Um so you mentioned those collaborations and I'm curious about people along the way that have kind of been helpful from the, the creative journey as a reader to now um, crafting these, these visual worlds in comics. Like in terms of like people that I've worked with, I mean, mm -hmm. or, or supportive uh, folks along the way as well. Yeah, I mean, my, you know, I guess the first one would be my wife, who uh, mm -hmm. always encourages me, even if she maybe doesn't really understand what it is that I'm doing. Um, she's not, she's not a big comic book fan, but she, she's very, she's very supportive and encouraging and in, in doing what I do. Um, you know, I've, I've been really lucky that I've worked with a lot of really great artists, right? Like, I have a lot of everything. Everything I do is a, is a collaboration. Like, I try to include the artist's vision, the artist's ideas, because, you know, without them, I, I, you know, I have nothing. So, um, guys like Vernon Smith that I did Bigfoot Frankenstein with, uh, Daryl Nickram, who I did the Argus mm -hmm. and feeder, he and I worked on, on both of those, those books together. Mm -hmm. Uh, you know, uh, Rob Kunenberg's who I did scum of the earth with, um, Jerome Akem, who I who I did, you, you mentioned knowledge. So he mm -hmm. and I did that. That 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 was a while ago. We actually have a new book, uh, a new graphic novel called "The Man Who Shook the Earth," which is done. Uh, we just need to, you know, twenty twenty four is going to be the year that I find a home for it. Nice. Uh, it's uh, kind of like the the. I don't want to say my final word on superheroes, but sort of in that it's like this kind of like almost pure distillation of all my superhero ideas, superhero loves mm -hmm, in, mm -hmm. in one book. So I'm, I'm, I'm excited to get to, to get that out in, into the world. Uh, yeah. I mean, really I'm, you know, I've been very fortunate to work with so many great artists who really bring, you know, their very best, you know, a game every time. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. And, um, I've heard from a lot of writers that talk about like that moment that you imagine something 
and then you share it with an artist and it comes back and you're like, oh, this is this is even better than what I imagined. So uh, I, I would imagine you've had some experiences like that along the way, too. Oh, absolutely. You know, you know it, it's easy to come up with an idea. You know what I mean? Like it, it, the ideas aren't the hard part. It's the, you know putting the work in to make the idea into something more is is kind of the is, is the actual work. But mm -hmm. coming up with just an idea, I always think to myself like if I can if I can get an artist to go, oh okay, like that's cool. Let's let's do that. That's you know that's job number one, right? Is to get the artist excited about it. If because if the artist is excited about it, it's going to translate on the page, mm -hmm. and you know that eventually. Uh, you know, a reader is going to feel the same way because mm -hmm. the artist is the first reader of, of anything that I, that I do. So, um, you know, if, if I can get them on board, if I can get them, you know, to have a little bit of skin in that game, then I know we're, you know, on the right track. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, anything you, you mentioned that idea of like cultivating ideas and starting with the idea and building it um, anything about your process that you'd like to share or um, kind of the what fuels the creativity I don't I know <clears throat> excuse me I don't, I don't know if I have an actual process to be honest I um, I I write down a lot of just random bits of information that I come across interesting phrases or interesting you know interesting words you know and i and i email them all to myself mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and every so often i'll go through that list and i'll be like i don't know what i was thinking about some of this stuff and and, and dump it but then sometimes i'm like oh okay that's that's kind of a cool idea but there's it's not a story right so that stuff will sit there and then eventually you know uh, if i'm lucky enough uh, another idea will present itself and then it'll sort of combine with one of those previous ideas and i'm like oh, okay that that's more than just two ideas that there is a story in there somewhere. Mm -hmm. um, and then it's just a lot of digging around to try and figure out what that story is. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm better at it now than I used to be after, you know, cause I've, I've been doing this now. Um, 2024 will be my, my 10 years that I've been getting published work done. So, nice. um, I'm I'm a little it's a little easier for me to recognize I think if something has some legs or not mm -hmm. and um I can I I'm I'm a little better at like at at forming ideas into into something that might become a story one day and I and I can hold a lot more of it in my head than I used to I used to have to write it everything had to be written down when I yeah. first started every, every piece of every information I had, I, you know, I, I was the notebook King. I had notebooks, you know, piled up. I could have made a throne out of them. Um, I can hold a lot more of it in my head now. So uh, I don't, I, you know, it's not, it's not such a, a, a tedious thing anymore, but it's yeah. In terms of, of, of process, it's really just a lot of ideas colliding with each other and eventually, you know, becoming something else mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah yeah um oh i was gonna go somewhere else there and it just left my head but um <laughs> you mentioned that you have uh the man who shook the earth is that is that the right title yes uh so that that is currently in development and on the way um curious about anything else that you'd like to mention creatively that has your attention at the moment and then uh, also web spaces, spaces where people can connect and, and learn more and follow along. So I have a few things that are, I hope, are slated for 2024. Um, the first one is uh, a graphic novel called Nothing Makes Sense, which is mm -hmm. coming out from New Friday Comics, um, which, is, again, is a bit of an, another bit of a departure from my, my, my normal work. Uh, it's a bit of a more of a, a gritty kind of crime, almost, but almost like a slice of life crime story. So uh, I'm, I'm pretty excited about that coming out. That's something that's, uh, that's an idea that's been in my head for a long time as well. And I have two books coming out from Scout Comics and they may not see publication in 24. They may, may be looking more at 2025, but um, I have a book called Strange Case. Mm -hmm. which is a, a, a take on Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. 
Nice, nice. And uh, I have a, uh, an another book called Happy Land, uh, which is um, Vernon Smith and I uh, from from Bigfoot Frankenstein. That's that's our our follow up book. Um, so we'll be we'll be putting in the work on that in in twenty twenty four. And I mean, there's, I always have a ton of stuff that I'm developing. So I've, I, I've got three or four pitches that are pretty close to being ready to, to show off. So um, those will be like first quarter of, uh, of 2024, trying to, trying to land some stuff. My, you know, my, my philosophy, I suppose, if I, if I had one, it would be, is that I want to try and have at least one thing published every year. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you know like just that. to just to keep my uh just to keep my name my name out there so that people you know i don't want people to forget about me if, if they've even heard of me to begin with so yeah yeah well um great creative vision and i remembered what i was going to say which is happy creative anniversary uh being the 10 oh, year thank you. yeah that's that's yeah. very cool and glad to hear that you're continuing to kind of keep the the creativity churning and it sounds like uh stories are on the way for some time to come yeah hopefully yeah as long as you know I, as long as i can find homes for some of this stuff and you know what some of it feels a lot more mature almost you know what i mean like uh, like the, I've, I've had some some growth as a writer in the last 10 years which is good I'd hate to have stayed stagnant for all that time, but right. um, yeah, some of it feels like maybe I, you know, leveled up a little bit. So uh, I'm I'm excited about what's what's coming. Um, and in terms of where you can find me, I mean, I'm on Facebook, uh, Instagram, Twitter. I refuse to call it X. So uh, you know, <laughs> you can you can find me there. I post some random stuff, you know covers and, 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 and the odd uh, page from stuff that I'm working on, new stuff that's coming up. So yeah, there's always a little sneak peeks uh, happening on my social media. Nice, nice. All right. Well, I'll be sure to uh, to link the Facebook and the, the connections there. And uh, Mark, I appreciate the time. Anything that we've missed in the talk through that you want to make sure to share uh, before we close out? No, I just, uh, I, I really appreciate you having me on and, uh, mm -hmm. you know, uh, I, I do like to talk about my work because I sometimes feel like, you know, in the, the independent comic, you know, world that I, that I exist in, uh, promotion is hard. Marketing is hard. You know, trying to get your stuff out there is, is hard. So anytime you have the opportunity to, I have, anytime I have the opportunity to talk about my work and, you know, hopefully point some new eyes at it, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm always really happy to do it. So I, yeah, I, I, yeah, I really appreciate you having me on. Oh, my pleasure. Any anytime. Um, if you want to come back to talk about um, the work for Scout or uh, other pieces, glad to, to talk with you anytime and share. That would be fantastic. Thanks very much. Yeah, thank you. And uh, may the creating continue. May the creative anniversaries um, stack up decade by decade. And uh, looking forward to talking again soon. All right. Perfect. Thanks very much, Jason. Thanks.